Facebook family, um, to my friends and family out there. I, this is nothing that I am um, definitely not used to doing this, but um, I've been in this place of this isolation with everybody else, but um, trying to get an understanding of a, a lot of things that's going on in my own life. Um, uh, so bear with me. I wrote out some things that um, that was on my heart um, in regards to relationships, um, our relationship with the Lord and, and, and the world, the difference between us and the world. Um, more so for us law enforcement, we have this, we make, so this, this Facebook thing is new for me, this live thing, so bear with me. Now, I've been on the police department 22 years now. Um, we have a, my class anniversary is coming up on the 27th of this month, actually. So happy anniversary, H&I, uh, 98 H&I. Um, but there are some things I wanted to, to share in regards to pledges and oaths and that we make. Um, we make pledges and oaths all the time. We make oaths for this police department coming on to the job. We make pledges um, to different societies, um, groups that we, are, we become a part of. Um, uh, judges make oaths. We, we give... Uh, oaths and we take an oath at the police academy we make uh oaths in courtrooms uh, we swear to give testimonies and things so um these oaths are really covenants you you kind of you're making a covenant covenant with an entity or an establishment but um we have a commitment to the establishments and entities and we don't have the same commitment to the covenants we make with the Lord um, in marriages and the oaths that we give um, to family and friends or, or, or the God himself just things that we commit to do we really understand what we are what we're committing to the the covenant the what a covenant is um and it's it's hard for us to to follow it's not always easy to follow christ in a world that's about self uh, we do selfies we have um self-help uh, we make uh pledges and promises to ourselves, uh, setting different goals and this, that, and other. We don't really put God in the same perspective um, as people have in the past. We don't have the same commitment as we do to our jobs, our um, organizations. We kind of put God in the back burner. Um, we fit him in when it's convenient. So, and, and part of it is because it's hard for us to give Jesus control, to give the Lord the control. That's really what it's all about, control. Are we willing to give the Lord control? Are, are we really ready to give up? Can we deny ourselves and give him control? Can we, can we deny ourselves and let him take control of our lives in everything? Because that's what he wants to control in everything that we seek him in everything that we do every aspect of our life do we make decisions without seeking him first um every aspect of our life um and it's a devil whammy for law enforcement because we're used to going to locations and taking control of the scene to try to get some type of clarity so that things don't get worse so that things don't explode further than what they are so it's a double whammy for us to do that in an aspect of your job and then come home and have that the, to put that on the back side or really we need it on the job we need the lord to take control even at the job on our way there i used to pray um me and my partner 
We used to pray. Everybody I seem to work with, we used to pray before we left the ramp. And certain runs that we would get, we would um, pray for um, clarity that the Lord would step in before we even got there. Just give us, a, to show us before we even get there. Let us give us eyes to see, ears to hear um, before we even show up on the scene. But um, in our jobs as, as in law enforcement, we we have to be concerned about ourselves and be concerned about the other people and concerned, concerned about our partners. Because um, our partners, we want to go home at the end of the day, just like everybody else. Um, we want to go home too. Um, so are we and can we let Christ take control of our lives? Are we willing to give Christ Jesus full control of our lives? And that's almost what kind of what it seems like is going on right now. He's after the control. He's like, I'm I'm waiting. Are you gonna give me control? Do you still want to be in the driver's seat? Or will you let me take control of this thing? Um because we have to remember, God didn't have to create us. He chose to create us. He he made Daniel. He made Aaron. He made Rodney. He made he made um, Yvonne. He made Pookie. He made Ray Ray. He made us with a purpose in mind. He had a purpose. He had some, he had a plan for us individually that he wanted us to carry out in the earth. That's just what it is. It's not about us going after our own personal wants and desires. He had a plan and it's our responsibility to find out what our purpose is, to understand it. What is his desire? What is What does he want out of us? You gotta die to self. Die. Die daily. Die. Um, I'm not a preacher. I'm not trying to preach. I'm just want to encourage some people. I want people to really just look at themselves. Take a moment since we are locked in, shut in anyway. Take a look at yourself. Try to understand what is it that God is after in you, not in what he's after in the president, not in what he's after in the chief, not in what he's after in the mayor. What is he after in you? Where are you at? Where are you at? Like when he called, when Jesus, when the Lord called out to Adam in the garden, he asked, where Adam, where are you? It's not that he was blind. He didn't see him physically in the garden. He wanted to know, where are you? Where are you in your thinking? Where are you in your spirit? Where are you? Um, as a believer, we, we have a, as a believer, Christian, what most people say Christian. I like, I prefer to say believer because um, Christian, so, Christian is so loose now. But um, as a believer, um, we tend to hide, hide or mask situations, circumstances that we go through in our own lives. So I believe it makes it hard for people who are not in church, people that we trying to encourage to come to church, it's hard to get them to come in because they think you got your stuff all together because you won't let people in to see. You got crap in your life just like everybody else. You got marital problems just like everybody else. You got financial problems just like everybody else. You got kid problems with your children, just like every everybody else. You have you have your fears, just like everybody else, that you are working to get to a place regularly, daily. I hope we are to get a better understanding on how do I get through this, and I can't get through this by myself. I need you, Lord, to help me get through this. Um. Because ultimately, it's about this. This is what it's all about. This is it, what he did here. It's not about our personal goals and desires. Now, he'll give us those things, but it's about seeking him first. All that stuff comes down. We get all that stuff naturally after seeking him first. But it's all about this. It's all about the cross, what he did. And we seem to forget that 
all our struggles, everything we tend to hide from the world, like we don't struggle, all these things. It's, it's about what he did on the cross. He did he all our struggles, he he took he took it to the cross with him. It's there. That's what makes the cross so ugly. He bore every sin on the cross. Every sin, every hurt, every pain, every discomfort, every abandonment feeling, every abuse, every divorce, every um, self-denial, everything, everything he took to the cross. And it's hard for us to look at the cross. It's not an easy thing to do, to look at the cross. It's, and I just got this understanding that it is an ugly thing. We, we look at Jesus on the cross, but it's an ugly, it's not an easy thing to, to, for anybody to share their, hey Tucker, it's not an easy thing to share our, our struggles. And I really believe that that's part of the problem in church with us and the people that we're drawn and we're called to, to bring into the church. The church has failed because we won't be open. We won't let people in. We won't let people see our mess, our brokenness. And in our brokenness is where the Lord gets to come in and mesh all of this, all our brokenness, our pieces together to transform us into the person he purposed us to be. He's just waiting. He's like just waiting on us to get to that place where we're like, okay, I'm tired of trying to do it myself. I'm trying, I'm tired of trying to steer this thing. I need you to take control. I want you to take control. It's because it's not about just needing him. You have to let him. Take control. You have to let go. Let go and literally let God, let him take control of your life. I um. Everyone claims, it's easy. Everybody claims to be a Christian. Well, I ain't going to say everybody because we know that there are those who, who don't. But how can we encourage people and if we haven't experienced some of the things we've gone through? So a lot of our experiences, our hurts, our, our um struggles and things are not for us and we're st and people get stuck there they're not for us we're he's giving given he's giving he's given us the ability he already put everything in us that we need so he's waiting on us to pull it up pull it out and use it speak in his word speak his word use it use it so that he can move because he's waiting to move in your life he's waiting to move in my life um, but we have a problem deny with denial. We we think we won't give him control. We just we got to do everything our way. Everything is about us, and the world has conditioned us to be just that way. Everything is about us: our cars, our hairstyles, our our makeup, our um, our homes. Um, we post everything. It's easy, so easy to post everything on Facebook and it's not the reality. A lot of it is not reality because behind it, we're broken. Post that. Post your brokenness. That's what reality is. That's the reality TV. Post your brokenness. We got people, I, my cousin just lost her husband. Broken. The family is broken. And we made it. I work in the same room as the first dispatcher that passed. It's a lot. Of, we got a lot of questions. Broken. Um. We deal with death. And we shove it up under the rug. This is one of the problems that I think that we have is in law enforcement. We are so trained to be strong all the time that we won't let God in sometimes because we are preconditioned that we're not supposed to break. 
because it is control. We're not supposed to let go. We won't take it here. And we need to let it go. We need to take it here. But we're conditioned to be strong. All the, all the gear, all the gear, all the bullets, the guns, all the, I mean, you cool as all get out. Everything in place. But, and you're holding everything about to implode because we won't take it to the cross. You bring, you bring the job home. You ain't got time for your family. You miss out on things. And, and at the same time, the things that you miss out on, it's not that you want to. It's because of our oath, our commitment to the establishment. No, we, we just, we can't let nobody down. It's easy for us to, but we let God down all the time. That establishment is still waiting. That relationship, I should say, is still waiting. He's still waiting. He's like, I gave you the job. And I'm still waiting on you. I want I want you to empty all that, that the anger you losing your partner. The death of your partner. I want you to bring it to me. The loss of your marriage. I want you to bring it to me. Because you committed to this job. Bring it to me. I got you. I need you to bring it to me. It's easy for us to hold everything. Easy. Because we're conditioned to do it that way. We see it as weakness. Like the world sees a believer as a weakness. There's jobs a lot of people on this job that sees a believer as being weak. They think because we hold our tongue with a lot of stuff that it's a weakness. And it's not. Please don't get it twisted. It's not. It's relationship. It's because we know who we are and we know whose we are more than more than anything. We know whose we are. And sometimes we're holding our tongue because we don't want our daddy to set you straight. That's just point blank, period. We know whose we are. Who walking by faith. When we're standing on his word. Now, I don't always hold my tongue though. So people on the job can tell you that. I'm not holding my tongue all the time. Especially when I'm pushed. I hold it for so long. Don't please don't take a believer as being weak. Believe you me. Our Lord and Savior calls for us to go and pray for those who offend us. We got to go home and pray for you. So it's not weakness. There is strength beyond measure. And holding, the bridle in the tongue. And it takes sometimes an army of angels to do it with some of us, Eastsiders. Um, there's always a, uh, a, a thing with us um, as believers there's a place that we need to go to more often um, for as law enforcement we need to be on our face before we leave out the door in the morning and I know it's so busy we, we have such busy lives and we have long hours um, we used to say we get paid for eight and get pimp for 16 or more. So we get it. I understand. But um, I, it's, it's this season, if we're not already doing it, we need to. We really need to find some time, cover our families, um, cover our, our jobs, pray for our leaders, pray for our chiefs, pray, pray for our mayors, 
pray for our presidents. These are our leaders. And if we're a believer and we're not doing these things, and we're told to do this in the word of God, we're told to do this. Whether we like them or not, the problem may very well be because we ain't praying. He can't do nothing that he wants to do because we won't bow to him, the one who gave us a job. Um, back to that brokenness. We, I really think that we need to let people in. That's what it's all about. Let people in. Let people see us broken. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, let them know it's okay, but they need to see us rising. We don't stay in that broken place. They need to see us understand what we, what we do when we're broken, that we take this to God so that they can see when, when the results, when the manifestation of us coming out starts to show or they actually see this, they're drawn. Like, who is this God? I need some of that. That's where we need to be. That's what we need to be. That's what we're called to be. Stop being shady. That's really what it is. You're being shady. So get out. Step out from the shade. In the light. Let them see us in, our, in the light. Let them see us in his light. When he come and he do the work. Let him do the work. Because that's what they. That's what's going to draw them in. They're going to witness him doing the work in our lives. Um, let them see the victory. Let them see the mess. And understand what you did in the mess so that they can see the victory. You see what our God did to get us through the victory because the victory is already ours. We just got to go through the process. And they need to understand that there is a process. We're not, we're not here. We're actually, we're on the winning end. We already won this thing, but we got to walk it out. And they need to see us walk it out. That we need to be that demonstration of our faith being walked out amongst the people that we we want to win the Christ. You see that um, as law enforcement, we need to display that more so, so that when we out there making locations and scenes, we can take control of it in the spirit before we even get there. Lord can point out the Holy Spirit can show you things on the scene before you even before you even get there. You know who you're looking for. That's where we want to be. It's not impossible. Can you imagine, as law enforcement, if we're in the spirit, we're functioning as believers in the spirit realm, doing law enforcement. Can you see the impact in Detroit alone? Changing of the neighborhoods? I wonder, is it wait, is, is, is the Lord waiting on us? The church and us, us, the believers on this job. We can change the neighborhoods. We can demonstrate Christ doing our job. We should be already. But we need to be the demonstration. We're we're actually leaders in our community. Charlie LaDuff, I don't know, he, he sent this, he did this post um, with this virus going on. And he was saying, where are the leaders? And it hit me. Where are the leaders? Who else is wondering where are the leaders? Where are the leaders? Because he's looking at everyone being affected by the virus. Law enforcement, you all are leaders. We're leaders. There is no rank in the spirit. We have our rank and file on this, doing this job, but there is no rank in the spirit. No rank but Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of hosts. So we keep him out front and wave this flag. We can do some things. We can change some things. We can shake up some things. Think about it. 
law enforcement moving in the spirit of God. Come on, y'all got to see this. <sighs> no. I'm not trying to keep y'all long. I just wanted to share a couple of things. That, um, speaking of the, the positions thing, we, we have, with the rank and file, we have positions. And it's easy to get caught up in positions. Um, we, we, got, we got chief, assistant chief, deputy chiefs, um, commanders, captains, lieutenants. We, sorry, we got rank and file. In that, the positions, let's not get so caught up in our worldly position that we forget to bow to the one who set up the government, the government, the heavenly kingdom government. Let's not forget to bow to that. Let's not forget that what we do, we're servants. We serve the community. That's what we do. We serve the community. So in our serving, let's not get caught up in being served. The blessing is in the serving. So don't get caught up in being served. The only one we serve in is Jesus Christ. And we need to be demonstrating it in the community that we're serving in. That's just truth. We, we really need to be focused on serving and, and not expecting anything. We shouldn't be trying to do doing everything. We're posting everything about what we're doing. It's, I mean, it's cool. You, you, the department's doing this and the department's doing that, or you're doing this, you're doing that. But let's not get caught up in doing that, and it's for you. That's the best way to put it. Who are you doing it for? That's how we can guard ourselves with not being caught up in the selfie, the social media, the the self edification thing. If you're getting paid to do it, if you're getting leave coming time, if you're getting anything for doing it, it's not a sacrifice. Because you're getting something for it. That's not the sacrifice. The sacrifice is your own time on your own dime. That's the sacrifice. Anywho, um, I just want us to remember that it's, it's all about relationship. It's all about having a relationship with the Lord. He's after a relationship. And I get that some some things have have turned people sour toward church. I get it. I have been sour toward church before. Um, I understand church hurt. I understand um, looking at things. We have police runs to churches. I remember the first year on the job, we had to run to a church. They were fighting in the church. Now, I was naive to think that people don't act up in church like that. That police run blew my mind. I, Tucker, I think you were, I think you were there too. I think all of us, third precinct, the old third precinct, made the location, and it blew my mind that people were fighting in the church. Um, all this kind of stuff, all these little things can can make us look at church with one eyebrow up, like, yeah, I don't see the difference between you and the rest of the world, so why am I going to go? That's how unbelievers look at us. If they can't see the difference between us and the world, they're not going to come. So, while we waiting on God, God waiting on us to get our stuff together. So, um, so let's tap on religion right quick. Uh, religion. 
can be a uh, a touchy subject. Religion is is uh, not the same thing as relationship. Religion can be a you you can go to church, you can wear the the crosses on your necklace, the praying hands on your necklace, dangling from your charm bracelet, and all that. You can have all that and not have a relationship with God and sit up in church every Sunday and not have a relationship. It's not about you not believing in God. It's about the relationship that he's after. The devil believes in God. He knows that there's a God. But it's the relationship that God's after. And we need to be after that as well. Seeking his face is about the relationship. That's what it is. Relationship. He wants to be everything to us. When I lost my dad, I needed to talk to my daddy because my daddy was my word man. And I realized it didn't, it didn't happen instantly, but I realized over time that he was after me. The Lord was after me seeking him. Not my earthly daddy who had passed on. I needed to have that same desire I wanted with my earthly daddy who was gone. I needed to do that with him. He wanted me to do that with him. Um, uh, religion can have you thinking your stuff don't stink. Poo don't stink. That's what religion has you thinking. You got everything together. Your finances together. Your life is together. It portrays, it, it gives this image that you got it all together, that you don't need a God. That's the scary thing. You have this attitude like you don't need God. You don't reference him. You don't talk about him to nobody. That's religion. Because you look the part. But you have no relationship. Um, we are not capable of doing anything without Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. We are nothing without him. Not capable of anything. Nothing. He wants us to pray out, pray through our situations, pray through it so that he can move in it um, to give him everything. While this COVID-19 situation, this lockdown and stuff has been going on, I've been getting up in the early morning hours. I, I do anyway um, and pray. But Psalm 91, I've been praying this over my family, over, over my coworkers, over the police department, over the leaders. Um, it's about a relationship. And it started, he, it was like the Lord woke me up. Like it's time to we time to hammer. Time to get busy. Time to do some damage. We gotta do some damage to the kingdom of this world. Start pulling down the kingdom of God. <clears throat> we gotta start taking some ground. People have been sleeping. We've been asleep. The church been asleep. Not no more. Not anymore. But you got to have a desire to do it. Lord's not going to force himself on you. He kind of, he forced us into this, uh, this situation right here. He allowed it. I do believe that, that he allowed it. Because he's given us opportunity to repent. All the other messes, all the stuff that's going on, that all us being in, in, into ourselves, all the selfies. And he's waiting. He kind of put us in this time out, waiting on us to get it. You got it yet? You got it? It's about me. It's about, it's about the cross. It's about Jesus and him crucified. I find it interesting that we're right here coming up on Resurrection, Resurrection Sunday and Passover. And all this breaks out. Don't take a rocket scientist to see some things. 
or I'm about to say something that probably wouldn't be politically correct, so I ain't gonna say it. Um, I'm just, I'm gonna just be open. Just, I'm just trying to share some things and encourage you. It, we got a God who's in control. He just wants control. He wants us to give him control in our lives. And we need to be in a place where we can hear. Take some time to hear him. Um, open up our, our, our lives to those who are, who might be in a hard place, who think they, they life is so screwed up. They don't know your life is just as screwed up. They don't know my life is just as screwed up. I'm warned for my marriage right now. We've been warring darn near six years. That's truth. Because our, our marriage, I know that the enemy knows what we're capable of doing. So we have to die to self. We got to die. So this marriage is on the altar. It crawls off the altar and you put it back up there. Time to thing crawl down, put it back up there. I'm praying for kids with blended family. Praying for them, everybody grown, but I still pray for them. Cover them, every last one of them like they mine. I will fight for my, my God children. I pray and cover them. I pray for them like they mine. Like the little nieces and nephews, I have already done my calling and checking and probably get on some of my cousin's nerves. But we got to be in this place that they're looking. They're watching. So if they're not seeing God anywhere else, they need to see it in us. We need to be letting God shine through us. Let him have control. We need to be the person on our blocks. My name, I go across the street. When I um, do things out in the yard, I bring candy to church. Because some of the little people, they give me this eye like they're going to jack me up if I don't. But on this block, I do the same thing for some of my neighbors. If there is a need on this block, I want them to be able to say that I know that she's a law enforcement officer. Maybe she can help me. That's how we need to be. Because they see us as leaders. No matter what we think about, about ourselves, we might not have the rank, but they still see you as a leader. We need to be ready all the time. I had so much stuff stacked up in this garage before this COVID-19 even started. It was put on my heart last year. I started putting canned goods and I were able to get water to make sure that it's in the garage in case somebody needs it. It wasn't just about me. It's about the community, my block. I should be able to help my block, somebody on my block. If they don't have it, I should be able to give it to them. That's what, how we need to be thinking. And it's not about, oh, I got, my, I got my own family. I get that. But we got to think beyond ourselves, think beyond our own walls. It's not just, we're not in this world alone. So pray for me as I pray for you. That's the reality. That's right. So, um, Miles, I heard Miles Monroe said this one day. A worshiper, a worshiper's heart is set on the object of their affection. Think about that. A worshiper's heart is set on the object of their affection. What is your heart set on? Is it set on this job? Is it set on your position? Is it set on your husband? Is it set on your wife? What is your heart set on? God wants it set on him. He wants you seeking his face. And seeking his face, we get everything else comes with it. He's going to give us the desires of our heart. Seeking his face first, though. Don't be distracted by everything that's going on in the world right now. Don't be so distracted by shut off the TV. Um, don't be so distracted that we, you, we can't hear. 
don't don't be so distracted that you can't you can't feel him because he's here he wants control let him take control i pray he takes control so with that being said um yeah i still have um when this is all over but we'll be start i'll be starting up the the officers coming over to the house to pray because we do do that um but pray for us. Pray for me and Rodney. We two believers and we're struggling. We struggle. Just like everybody else, we struggle. It's a work. I'm committed to doing the work and I'm committed to my covenant. More than anything, the covenants, don't let a covenant that you made with your job, anybody that's married, don't let a covenant that you made with your job, a sorority or whatever, outshine your covenant that you made with the Lord, with any covenant that you made with the Lord. He's God. Don't think he ain't forgot. Don't think he's like, ah, uh, she must have forgot about me. He's watching. You can't fool him. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. So, with that, I love y'all. Smooch's Facebook family, stay encouraged. Please read Psalm 91 if you get a little rattled. Oh, let me read this to you. Um, because this was on my heart to, to read too. Uh, Matthew 6, 25 through 27. This is why I tell you to never be worried about your life, for all that you need will be provided, such as food water, clothing, everything your body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. Do you think they worry about their existence? They don't plant or reap or store up food, yet your heavenly father provides each of them with food. Aren't you much more valuable to your father than they? So which one of you, by worrying, could add anything to your life? The Lord says, don't worry. That's the Passion Translation of Matthew 6, 25 through 27. Don't worry. He's got you if you want him to. He's here. Love y'all. Smooches.